Hello and welcome. We are delighted today to have Anna Kay and Christopher Wyant here. Am I saying Wyant right? Is it Wyant or Wyant? You're saying it right, Wyant. Thank you. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Oh Fantastic. I sh something you should ask before you start the interview, Kitty. <laughs> telling you that. And they are the author and illustrator of It Is Not Small. Do you have a copy of the book there? I should have asked you about that. So it's okay if you don't, but if you want to grab one, because people want to see because they're going to look at this book and go, oh, oh, yes, we know this book. Or one of the others in the series. It doesn't really matter. It can be any of the books. Okay, here it comes. One of them here is... Here it comes. Out. We're building the suspense. We are building suspense. Will it be You Are Not Small? Hmm. The Geisel winning book? <gasps> we Are Not Friends? Another wonderful book. Thank you very much. So, so Anna, you can join us. We got the idea. Oh, okay. So, it's good. So now I want you to hold the book up with both of you there. There, uh, there we go. There's the money shot. Thank you. So now, now you can put it down or you can continue holding it, whatever feels comfortable. So, so you all know these books. Um, these are amazing and they're so great with, with um, both with young readers because they can read these books themselves, but also with young children. I know that as somebody who frequently does story time, that these are my go-tos when I have a wiggly bunch it means a simple story, but these are such great stories. So tell us about how this, how the original came to you and how you've taken it through all these different chapters in the lives of these two friends. Well, how much time do you got? You're just kidding. <laughs> well, about eight more minutes. So, you know, go crazy. <laughs> I can talk really fast. You Are Not Small is the first book we made together um, in uh, five years ago. And uh, it came from, I've, uh, I said it in the Geisel speech, actually, it, that it, the book was, uh, idea was just a culmination of my childhood and my growth process with regard to um, me feeling kind of outside the mainstream and outside of being the only minority in my neighborhood and, um, always uh, growing up from a perspective of being um, less than. Mm. When it came to media, uh, what I saw in my life and also in everywhere. So uh, it, it, it does, you know, it's, it's not great for children to grow up in that context without any um, alternative you know, philosophy about that. So when I got older, I did a lot more traveling and um, spent a lot of time in Korea, where I'm from, where my, my family is from, and Japan. I actually saw the flip side, which to me was kind of funny. It was like the upside down world, where everybody looked like me, and Chris looked kind of strange. So it's almost like a dreamland where everyone's wearing like it's backwards. <laughs> So when you spend enough time in that way, as you're older, you really see that that truth wasn't actually the only truth. So when it was time to write a book, I really wanted to speak to young people like me and others. And it's not just about color, obviously. It is about size. It is about height. It is about lots of things, class. Um, you're, it's not that you're not something. Maybe that other person is the not. So I had never seen a book like that, that spoke to me as a child that without being preachy and pedantic. So I wanted to be super simple and um, I wanted people to feel everyone is perfect the way they are. Beautiful. And the illustrations, how did, how did the illustrations come about? Um, we were really specific. I mean, it's nice because we're authors and illustrators in the same house. So we get to talk about our stories long before, you know, they actually go into print and or before they come to my drawing desk. And so Anna really wanted to make sure that if we're going to be looking at the story of these two different groups, that they look um, uh, similar where we recognize how similar they are, but they don't. Right. So uh, originally, I think we were looking at she wanted something that we wanted something that was gender neutral and that was uh, approachable. And I think we were looking at some sort of robot sort of thing. 
but like alien like alien like it's just a, a its own <laughs> thing but, but luckily um i my artistic skill only goes so far and so i'm like well i like fuzzy. i wanted something fuzzy uh, I, I could draw something i wanted the kids to really want to like touch that you wanted those sure. little children just wanted the character to come spend so much time with so many different things so we ended up drawing it going through a variety of, of sketches um and then we ended up uh, showing hannah and then we showed our agent Hannah McGee, and she's like oh that one uh, we did this in a restaurant at one point where I had this one sketch, and I'm just like, yes, that's it. Um, and so the, 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 the characters are really different versions of themselves, right? I mean, you can kind of play with it uh, for a lot of different ways, and we recognize how similar they are, or we all are, but we have our differences, and so it is a matter of brain. So that's what it kind of came about. And we were hoping that it wasn't an identifiable species, like a girl, or a boy, or a human, or a dog, because uh, we really wanted the message and the theme to be the star. Right. Yeah. And so in all the characters in all the books, they are not one thing. I think they sometimes look home bears, but they're actually not bears. They're their own creation. And we have uh, fuzzy things. Uh, fuzzy yes. things fuzzy and giraffe-like things. things and kangaroo-like rabbits. And uh, so I kind of always yeah. make it, own, they exist in their own world. You're stripping away any preconceived yeah. uh, ideas that people might bring to it. You know, that might be a really fun activity for kids to create their own unidentifiable animals or not animals, beings. So, yeah, that could be a really fun activity for preschool teachers. Do you have, have you heard from teachers or parents about ways that people have used these books with kids? So what are some of the most successful or interesting ones you've heard? Uh, the, you Are Not Small one is very popular mm -hmm. where they actually do math. I mean, they, they do measurement and they do relative size. So they, for very young kids, kindergartners, they'll take a, like a paper tape measure and they will go around the classroom and measure comparatively the chair versus the book versus so that. They've done that with their students mm -hmm. in terms of height and um, what else? Um, lots of things. Yeah, on the perfect. Uh... Oh, yes. Yeah, perfectly. Because uh, at that age, actually at all ages, getting things right or being frustrated in the attempt is so hard. It and is so, not perfect. Yeah, yeah, it is not perfect. It is not perfect. And so that's a great story for when we kind of get to have that conversation that perfection is probably maybe not the goal. And maybe let's work through it and keep trying. Um, in my world as an artist, I, we always tell the kids uh, and the, we talk with the teachers about that uh, we go through many, many drawings. <laughs> It just it's part of the process. It's really, really okay to make those mistakes. And actually, you'll find great things through the mistakes. That's right. And, and I always think of that book. I mean, perfect is the enemy of the good. You, if you try to, if you strive for perfection, you never get anything done. So there's a point when you have to let it go. Uh, I see how art teachers, you know, who, who are trying to use art might use um, It Is Not Perfect yes. as, a, as a way to uh, talk about art. And when, you, when you're done, Hard to know. So staying true to your own vision and, you know, if you need to, and how to how collaboration works, too. Yeah, I think that book, um, the, the intention was um, twofold. First, uh, you know, as a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> when to, you know, stop and, uh, and also as a, you know, what comes along with that is sometimes you forget to be in the present and in the moment. You're so in your head. You're forgetting what's right in front of you, which is your best friend, enjoying this beautiful day. And so they learn that at the end, that what really is perfect is none of these creations you're doing and the pleasing you're trying to do with all these friends, but just being with your partner and just enjoying right now is uh, really what I was trying to convey as well. Like just be in the moment, nothing is perfect, but what can be perfect the here and now. Yes, I, I think that's a beautiful point and it's something we can all be reminded of every day. Yeah, for sure. And I should point out that, that the two of you, I mean, you're a couple. So this is a really interesting, are you, are you not? Did I? <laughs> Don't do that to me. I thought I read that. <laughs> you just anyway, live, 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 I, I just, they're living uh, in the moment. <laughs> But, but the cool thing, a lot of times authors and illustrators never even, you know, talk to each other. But in this case, these were conceived as projects for you to do jointly, right? Yes. yes. 
which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to not say how much fun these books are. So there happens to be a, a teacher or a parent watching this video and they're, they're thinking, oh, I can learn all these important lessons. Yes, you can, but they are fun to read and they're fun to be, they're fun to hear and they're just, I, I just never get tired of them. So I just want to make sure we make that point. Thank you. Yeah, thank fun you. books as well as can be used in all these interesting ways. That's very nice because that was actually one of our uh, goals as well. You know, you can be, have all your messaging as much as you want, but if it's not funny and fun, it's just going to fall on deaf ears with, with children especially. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. One of the things I like with what Anna's, the, her stories is that they're having all these great multiple teachable moments and conversations for teachers and for parents. But in the end, I get to uh, have some fun with these wonderful characters. And so we, we have two young daughters who always have to also pass like the fun test where I'll show them the work. And if some like, crazy action's going on or they're doing something, the two characters are doing something to each other, which is really funny for their age, I have to see how they react. And then if they, I won't say anything about it. And if they react properly, then I'm like, okay, I'm on the right track. So it's like a built-in test audience. Oh yeah, that's perfect when you've got them right there and you can spring it on them. <laughs> And what good memories you're making for later because you know 10 years you say oh yeah i remember that was the it is not perfect year or, yes. so actually that would be a great book to be able to use with middle schoolers but we won't go there <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll stop right now i just want to say thank you so much for taking time on this busy early november day to talk with me about it is not perfect and thank you for your wonderful books and for sharing them with us Thank you so much, Ellen.